the wet pet. This is how the American poet Ogden Nash called the humble goldfish at the beginning of the 1900s. Uh, today I'm going to build a goldfish tank, believe it or not. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Its habitat, by definition, is the bowl with the castle in the middle, <laughs> anchored, <laughs> and then you have some uh, pebbles around it. But we are not going to do that today. Oh, and by the way, the glass bowls are being prohibited in many countries, including Hungary, because green aqua is from Hungary, but we ship to most European countries. So without further ado, let's start working. Lori is here to help me with the biggest stones. These are the wild rhino stones. I'm not going to use any plants. So this is going to be a first time for everything at Green Aqua. First time goldfish and first time hardscape only. I'm using the uh, juniper wood. Oh wow, this looks great like that. Aquascaping is a beautiful hobby. It's a process. It's about doing something, creating something underwater. Many Americans, for example, use it to build ponds or to build uh, water features. Okay, so I don't think that uh, we can say that aquascaping is equal to nature aquarium. I'm going to use about eight goldfish because I learned that brings luck and one of them has to be a black one. So obviously that's gonna be the main number here. We have a huge Eheim 2080 filter below this tank. We do not need aeration for these fish because the surface is big enough. We will not have CO2 injection because we do not have plants in there. I'm using the Wheel Sand, the Rocket, the grayish one. I will apply that onto the top of the liquid superglue so that you don't see the white spots. It's very important that this is a 360 aquarium that can be seen from all sides. It should look equally good. It should lead the eye towards the center of the gallery from right to left in 45 degrees to point towards the corner of, of the gallery. Like having a shallow tank here is, uh, is, is not by chance. So this is why we never build higher aquariums nowadays uh, in this place. How does goldfish come into the aquascaping hobby? Well, first of all, I cannot be expected to do the same style of aquariums all the time. Obviously, not all styles are so close to my heart. So maybe I'm a big Iwagumi fan, but I need to do some goldfish tanks sometimes. <laughs> but I know that many of you guys like this style, so you will probably like what I do, hopefully. These uh, goldfish need a lot of swimming space. So if I'm filling up the aquarium with uh, stones, you will not have the swimming space for them. These fish, originating from the 6th century from China, and there's a lot of mysticism surrounding these beautiful fish. They consider that they bring luck. Actually, in the Buddhist culture, at the beginning, the monks have introduced them into their ponds, uh, like a good deed uh, to these fish, because they had better conditions in these ponds than in nature. Tommy fighting with the wood. Not safe at all, because now it's eye level. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> yeah, fix it. Thank you. I will. <laughs> Anybody with any more ideas? <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to the ADG over in Texas and uh, to the Sensky brothers. They have a beautiful gallery there and uh, they have inspired me enormously in the build of this aquarium. These fish poop a lot and the mom can decompose into ammonia that can result in ammonia spikes and as I mentioned in most videos if you have ammonia spikes your fish can suffer, they can die so it is very very important to have good quality filtration. Efficient and good quality filtration is key to plant and fish health. How do we achieve actually crystal clear water? Well we have three factors good technology, good tech, proper maintenance and some knowledge. Hopefully you will find all of them on the Green Aqua channel. This whole thing started to open from this top. 
the temperature needed for goldfish is a little bit lower than uh, for regular community fish. This is why we do not usually recommend to keep them together with other fish because they need cooler water. These fish are considered hardy by default, so you, it doesn't really matter if you have uh, soft water or hard water with, uh, with this. But probably the colors will be more accentuated uh, if you use soft water. I ran out of ideas, so the bulk of the hardscape is done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the YO sand and then introduce some details, some more details with uh, some white rhino stones. Oh, and why don't we have any plants in this aquarium? Because goldfish will eat plants, they are omnivorous, so they will eat everything that they find. Like an Anubias or any fern types will probably survive for a couple of days with them, but they will start nipping on the leaves and uh, the plant can be damaged, so I don't want to use it. Unlike, for example, the uh, La Plata sand, that doesn't need any uh, rinsing, but this one definitely needs some. Because goldfish really like to dig and they will disturb the substrate and, and, and some more dust will come out and you will never have a crystal clear water. Make sure you use pebbles that are not sharp because they can cut the mouth of these fish, they will dig around, so you want to have some pebbles that are rounded. Plant heavily from day one so that you can establish an ecosystem that is healthy for fish and, and everybody else, living creatures in the aquarium. But we do not have any plants today, so I'm going to fill it up with water now. And we do not have any active soil. And if we don't have any active soil and the bacteria, we, we will introduce some uh, nitrifying bacteria in it to help with the nitrification process of the aquarium, then the aquarium, the ecosystem will be stable. So I can introduce the fish. And it is time to introduce them. I've got eight as promised. Uh, let me walk you through the little fish that I have here. It is the uh, red cap uranda, uh, which is a beautiful white fish with the red head. I quite like, like that. Look at that guy. First guy went in. The first one on the left side is the Calico goldfish, which has three colors. It has orange, black, and white. Most three-colored goldfish are called Calico unless uh, there are other body characteristics that needs to be talked about. The yellow one that we have here, it's very interesting because in the past, only the Chinese emperor had the right to keep the yellow goldfish. Nobody else could have any yellow goldfish in their ponds. But now we're emperors here at Green Aqua because we have the beautiful yellow goldfish. And moving on, we have the telescope goldfish, the black one. As I explained to you at the beginning, you've got to have a black goldfish in every goldfish tank that you have. The next one is an orangish reddish one. Uh, it's called the double tail goldfish. Uh, it looks like a very common goldfish to me. Uh, when I'm thinking of goldfish, usually I'm, I'm thinking of that color. The last two goldfish that we have here are the Ryukin goldfish, which are very interesting because they have like three colors as well, but uh, their body is much, much shorter than the regular goldfish. And I think their body shape is really interesting and uh, they are really fine specimen right here. I'm really proud to have them in this tank. Beautiful. They look great under these uh, lights. I love the colors. These, these guys look much better under this reddish light than, uh, than you would think. And they already added life to this whole thing and added color to this whole thing, so it's going to be great. Obviously, as they grow, we're not gonna keep them here for years. As they grow, they're gonna probably go out into our pond uh, because they will look better there and they will have a bigger uh, water to swim in. The main food that these fish will eat is the uh, Hikari goldfish staple, but I'm going to feed them with the Danelec color booster. The problem with this is, is it's really it's the small grain size, so you have to be very careful when you feed them because the, the food can go everywhere and it can rot, it can decompose, creating ammonia spikes, uh, adding problems to the fish health and, and uh, uh, triggering algae. So this is what we're going to use here. Oh, I wanted to talk the, about the in and out flows because many people have asked me that. Okay, we have four holes in this one, uh, in this aquarium, we drilled four holes, and we have uh, 
four through holes, plastic through holes in them, which were actually not only fastened with, uh, with O-rings to the both sides of, of the base uh, plate of the aquarium, but they were also glued in for, for added safety. Just have this inlet hanging in here, so you can take it out and the water will flow in regardless. I don't want to take it out more, but you can see that there's a white, white uh, ceiling tape uh, around it. So this can, can be taken out and you can actually maintain this. And there's another intake in the back and this intake has a skimmer in it, which is very important for the water quality and the, ensuring the proper gas exchange. If you do have a skimmer, then the proper gas exchange is accentuated, it's working in the tank. If you have this film on the top of the aquarium, that will block the gas exchange and, and the oxygenation of the water will no longer be proper. So you need to have a skimmer, absolutely need to have a skimmer. This one is not only an intake, but it's also a skimmer. The third one that we're using is the outlet and the outlet works in the similar way. You can take this whole thing out and now the water is just coming through that through hole there. This is a custom pipe that was manufactured in 45 degrees, so it's not pushing the water upwards, it's actually pushing the water in this direction, in the direction of my fingers. And the fourth hole right now is actually blocked, so it's not in use. I quite like this, this technology, uh, this filtering method that we're using here because you don't have any hoses sticking out and, and going over the rim of the aquarium and, and the whole thing can be kept minimalistic. Okay, you guys, so this was the uh, goldfish video for this week, something else for a change. It's a short-term project at Green Aqua. Please let me know in the comments what you think about uh, this uh, very interesting scape. Let me know what you think about it. It's certainly some, in some interesting stuff today, right? Okay, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to support our channel with the membership, with subscriptions, with likes, with everything. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.